Late night. I'm Gavin Huang, and I'm with Han Li Chu, our videographer. Hey. Uh, we're filling in today for Dolly Lee, who's on vacation in Pittsburgh. I uh, hope she has. She's having a lot of Philly cheese. Oh wait, that's that's Philadelphia, not Pittsburgh. Uh, wow. Anyways. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yep. But I mean, have some cheesesteak is pretty good. Yeah, if you can get it in Pennsylvania. Anyways, uh, we're here with Hanley because he uh, he just joined our team uh, out here in Hong Kong, yep. uh, and he's he's been doing really well here. Uh, you were just on a shoot the other day. Uh, um, Fishball. Fishball. Yeah. yeah. Wait. Can you tell thanks us for having about me that? first. Yeah, yeah, of course. Fishball. You all want to know about Fishball? Well, we did this shoot. Um, wanted to get to know Pink Gall. Who started this fishball called? Um, his name is Ping Gao, right? Ping, Ping, not, not like Apple. Ping, 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 Ping Guo. Oh. But it's Ping Gao, not like Apple, oh, okay. not like Apple. All right. Yeah, because it could sound pretty similar. Yeah. But yeah, um, so he was telling us about like, he's been in the game for like 40 years mm -hmm. doing fishball and stuff. Wait a minute, his name is Apple? Nah, it's not, but it sounded like, it sounded like, because Ping Gao is like his name, like Gao is oh. like brother, right? <laughs> Ping Guo <laughs> is Apple. Oh, okay. You, you see right. the similarities? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, um, and then we're trying to like get into the process of how like he handmade those fish balls. Mm -hmm. Started from like real fish, not pork. Um, oh yeah, because <laughs> you know how like these days like fish balls apparently have all different kinds of meat in there. Right. Uh, it can be pork, beef, uh, I don't know, whatever like meat they seem to happen to find on the street, I suppose. Right. So right. This guy like really wanted to make a point. That oh yeah, it's, he like, did. Real fish. He was like, "Hey, Henley Peep." These are real fish. We're making it out of real fish. 
becoming fish balls. And I was like, okay, I got, I got, I got the point. But th this one part is really sweet. Um, we ask uh, me and Nick and um, Venus were asking like, mm -hmm. so what did you gain or lose from making fishball? Like being in this mm -hmm. industry for like 40 years, mm -hmm. never stop. And um, he said like he lost a lot of freedom, but he gained his wife. And I was <laughs> like, oh, wow. oh man, so sweet. <laughs> Wife's tearing up. He's like loving the. Not even era part of the family. I'm tearing up. You know what I'm saying? I was on the side like. What is like his wife was a customer? Type. Is that the idea? What? Is that the love story? Like his wife was a customer. Nah, like this is kind of. I love. think. How did they met? It's funny because like w they uh, Pingo showed us our like his childhood photos and stuff when mm -hmm. he was young. He yeah. got this crazy ass mustache, <laughs> and then he looks pretty cool to be honest. So I was just like, oh my god, like he's like a. Uh, He's a cool looking dude. And mm -hmm. then his wife were like, nah, he just looks like a thief. <laughs> I was like, but, but then you married him. And I was like, yeah, I, I, I like that look. And I was like, oh, okay. Did he say he stole my heart? That's why he's a thief. Nah, not, I feel okay. like right. you know, that, right. that would be a little too like, <laughs> everybody would be looking at each other and be like, how but did I, I react really to that? Roll, uh, I roll, anyways. Anyways, enough about fish balls. Yep. Um, we're here because uh, you worked with Wing Sha. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know uh, Wing Sha, he was the go-to set photographer for Wong Kar Wai. So he's that guy who did all those uh, brilliant stills from In the Mood for Love, Happy Together. Um, and you had the privilege to work with this guy. For a little friend. bit, for a little bit, yeah, yeah. For a little bit. I was honored to be able to work for him. Um, actually, when I was like yeah. really young, mm -hmm. s I think maybe like 18 years old, it's my, uh, I was studying in high school or college. I came back for summer in mm -hmm. Hong Kong. Yeah. And I um, shoot uh, him an uh, email about like interning for him. Mm -hmm. Never really heard back. And I was like, damn, oh. like that sucks. And then like after I graduated and I, I worked, um, I worked in Bill Studios for a little bit and I came back to Hong Kong, I thought like, you know, why not? I shoot another email to him. I still didn't hear back. Four months later, I was about to take this job in uh, Shanghai, and the day before I signed the contract, straight up, it's that dramatic. His producer called me and was like, "Do you want to have a have tea with me?" And I was like, "Sure, like, I'm down for tea." Yeah. <laughs> and then like I, I met with this producer, and um, she was wondering if I want to join the team. Mm -hmm. So, hell yeah, right away. That's like the classic story of you just sending an email over and over to someone and bugging the crap out of them yeah. until they finally listen and hire you. Yeah, I mean, really two emails in the time span of five years, so it's not that crazy. But yeah. hustle, I still think of him. Mm. The, and were you always interested in photography from when you were young? Yeah, ever since my dad gave me my first camera <laughs> when I was like 12, I don't know mm -hmm. what am I gonna do with that small yeah. little, shout out right. to Canon. <laughs> shout, shout out to Canon. <laughs> nah, but for real. And then I just love taking pictures of like my classmates, my friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. and then that's yeah. how the passion started. Mm -hmm. And you studied in, uh, and you ended up studying art in New York. Yeah, I did. Uh, and, but you're from Hong Kong. I'm obviously. from Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. So what was that transition like going to New York? Oh, I mean, I actually started going to high school in Vermont. Oh. Yeah, and then Where in Vermont? Uh, St. Johnsburg. Straight up. Yeah, it's like an isolated to town. Up in New Hampshire. Oh, word. So it was like freezing all the time. But I'm also from New York City. So right, I'm not right, like right, used right, to right, like right, going right. from like a huge city to like a rural area. Um, and then back to a big city again. Right. Uh, obviously now in Hong Kong. It is freezing cold um, though. Vermont is like... <laughs> If y'all like summer, you don't want to go to Vermont. They always said like there were four seasons. It was cold, more cold, <laughs> construction, and then getting cold again. Construction <laughs> isn't like... Okay, yeah, but uh, yeah. During the summer, they like... Feel like oh, right, 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 yeah. yeah. It is still like, I don't know. Most of the, the town itself, like a lot of the store are closed. Mm -hmm. I spent like three years there, like at the end of the main street, like only like there are actually only three stores and a bunch of like empty like yeah. empty stores and stuff like that. It stayed the same way <laughs> three years later. Yeah. So it's like it's okay. Yeah. But the funny thing is about all of this yep. is Wing Xia has a similar story, right? He yeah. grew up in Hong Kong, 
Uh, and then he went to Vancouver yeah. in Canada to study art. He did. And he says it was like quiet, peaceful, one of the best times of his life. And then he comes back to Hong Kong uh, to be a photographer. Yeah. Uh, and I remember reading this, uh, this story about him, about how uh, when he first moved back t from, uh, to Hong Kong from Vancouver, he said that he hated it. Yeah. It was like it was too busy, it was too loud. Vancouver was like so peaceful and quiet. Um, I don't know if you got that same sense and that sort of like feeling when talking to him about his transition from going from um, the U.S. and from the States uh, yeah. to Hong Kong. I did. I mean, I wouldn't say like I want to come back to the city. I mean, to Hong Kong. That's why like I like out from from New York, but. Uh, I wouldn't say I hated the city. It's just like it's just very different. Like people here are more like they're the rhythm, the working rhythm. They're just more into the stuff that they think benefits themselves, right? Yeah. And I think for for Wayne, he finds that annoying. <laughs> probably, he just want to do like just want to do cool stuff. He want to keep creating stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes like this city kind of limits you from doing that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so because it's so busy and everyone's right. Oh, it's very like commercial minded, mm, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But he developed his style uh, in Hong Kong, and uh, we have we have some pictures to of um, some stills from the movie to show. Um, they are very uh, based off like the neon lights in the city. Yeah. They're very. They come off of the the environment that he's that he uh, has been living in for the past decade for the past few decades yeah. uh, it's very sharp colors uh, and we can see that from the, uh, the pictures that have come out but what was it like watching him actually work oh <laughs> uh, how do I describe that he gives you a feeling that like um, he's hard to approach Really? He gives off that feeling just because like he's been in the game for like also it's like yo making fish about 40 years in the game He's about that. He's about in the game for like 30 or 40 years. So he's right. very experienced. Yeah. He mm -hmm. walked in he know he doesn't have to be like It's not his job to be catching up with everybody. Mm. His job is just to create so he just comes right. in yeah. The first thing and the only thing he cares about is to create that mm -hmm. So when I first met him, I felt like that intimidation. But getting to know him and watching him from the side, he's like really humble. But in the sense that like, like I always say self-centered and self-confidence is like a one thin line away, right? He mm -hmm. managed to stay in self-confident and never get off to that thin line, become cocky. <laughs> so like that makes him really humble. Like he's yeah. like, he, if he loves that work, he's going to tell you that, oh, I love this work mm -hmm. that I just shot. If he doesn't like it, then he's going to say, like, it's yeah. I, it's whatever. Mm -hmm doesn't like yeah yeah he's very narrow uh, or tunnel vision when he like start working mm. yeah I remember reading about <laughs> how what he was like on Wong Kar Wai's set that when he first did happy together all his shots were like out of focus yeah they were blurry the it looked like they all looked like mistakes and yeah. he'll and he said in interviews that uh, Wong Kar Wai thought they were mistakes and actually got angry and was just like what the hell is all this why can't we see Leslie Chung's face uh, I don't know if Wong Kar Wai is the one that got angry because I think he, Wong Kar Wai thought that he has the guts to actually shoot this <laughs> series without having the main character being in focus. Mm. Like, I think Wong Kar Wai was impressed with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's say we're all on set and be the set photographer. There's only how many, like maybe max two or three. He's probably the only one or, or a few or anything. If you want to get the, the right shot, right? Mm -hmm. You want to yeah. get like, oh, make sure that that thing's in focus. But for Wayne to like be like, you know what? The vibe may be better if it's a little more blurry. Mm -hmm. And he did that and presented to being the first project doing with yeah. Wong Kar Wai too. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think like they have a mutual respect to each yeah. other. Yeah. yeah. How do you have that instinct though? Like mm. how, how can you tell that, how can you be so confident that you're shooting something, it's off the cuff, he's totally spontaneous uh, with, with these shots and still confident that even though the camera isn't, if, even if the shot isn't in focus, that it's gonna come out right. I think like, I mean I can't speak for him, you know, but um, 
it's like a natural instinct, I guess. Like, uh, it, it's a god. It's you just feel right. There's, and for him, like, I don't think he cares about like, oh, I'm a set photographer. He just like saw an opportunity where he can create. So he like wanted to like benefit like his own art mm -hmm. and start doing like crazy stuff. He didn't care if this photograph is actually going to be used or nothing. That's my that's my own personal opinion yeah. though. I don't know if you actually think of that. Maybe he cares a lot. Maybe he's like, oh my god, I, this photo needs to come out. You know what I'm saying? But like, um, but yeah, I feel like for him to be that confident, he has to like, he has to not care about how people think of him. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's how I want to live my life. That's hard, man. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think about how people think of me every day. Like, am I like Tony Learn yet or? Nope, there was a joke that nobody laughed, so it was okay. <laughs> when do you think I'm Tony Young? No, nah, I'm just saying like, like, hey, am I, am I good looking yet? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, not, not like literally, I'm just saying like, we all sort of like care about how people see us. Yeah. So like, you know, that kind of limits our own ability a little bit. Yeah. No, I just think I look like Leslie Chung. Yeah, like. <laughs> uh, I just, apparently some people have told me that I look like Leslie Chung. Right, right. Um, but really, it's more myself, telling right. myself. You need to convince yourself, right? You give yourself that confidence. That I look like him. And then and suddenly, when I look in the mirror, I see Leslie Chung. Yeah, I almost, <laughs> now that I say it, I think maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but Anyways, uh, did you get any lessons out of it? What lessons did you learn from working with, um, with him? Ooh, quite a lot, but. The biggest one. Besides yeah, the technical stuff, it would be like, to not care about mistakes. Mm. I think that's the biggest one. Um, I remember him talking to me. Uh, I'm always like, how to say, I get stuck in the mindset that like the photograph have to be fundamentally good. Mm. If it's a bad photograph, it's a bad photograph. Like you want it to be like a Vogue fashion shoot or something. Well, like. not necessarily. <laughs> not all of their shoots are like amazing, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's just the hype. But then like, it's like, you know, oh, the composition is terrible. Like. Some things just aim right, the color aren't matching or something like that. Like I have an own particular uh, point of view in that, right? And Wayne will always try and pull me out of that little like um, wormhole. He would just be like, hey, um, I'm sorry, like this earpiece keep falling off, so I keep touching my ears. <laughs> it's just <laughs> mistakes. Yeah, mistakes. Just gotta embrace, gotta embrace mistakes. mistakes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But nah, yeah, um, so he would always be like, there's no such thing as good or bad photographs. Mm. And then um, I didn't quite get that at the beginning because I because because he would still tell you that oh this wouldn't work but he wouldn't he would never use the word bad he would just be like oh. it didn't work for the context because of that but then he was just like yo appreciate good or bad photograph and and just and just let that thought go once you like stop caring about if your photographs is good or bad you just be shooting based on your feelings mm. and that's when the best work came out yeah. But I think that takes experience, man. He's like 30 Absolutely, years in the game. Yeah. I'm like, what, max 10 years in the game still, so. Yeah, but he was like, what, in his 20s when he was started working with Wong Kar Wai on that very first film? Mm, yeah, 97, no. 1997? 1997, like 2018, yeah. that's like. Yeah. Yeah, mm. almost 30, 30, I would say 30, mm, yeah. yeah. Um, so you still, you still have time to make a mark. Yeah. Does. Do you have a favorite image of his? Uh, not particular, like a single photograph that I like enjoyed a lot, but probably series. Mm. I really enjoyed his collage series mm -hmm. and um, Sweet Sorrow, mm. both of them. And this is like his artwork, so this is like not the stuff necessarily that... Yeah, um, not like, oh, uh, Wong Kar Wai's photographer, right. Wang Sha, yeah. and then like yeah. a bunch of like mm -hmm. in the mood for love photographs. Yeah. Like they're cool, but I feel like I really love when he start doing things just based off his mm. vision and he just construct yeah. a scene for it like for his collage thing mm. he was he literally I, the one image you showed me he literally has a condom on the yeah on, the the on yeah yeah it's hella creative like <laughs> i think that photographs is like is either happy together or something on as a, a, on a set or a bed or something yeah, i could be wrong though like, yeah, yeah well, but that's mm -hmm. what it looked like it gives you that vibe and then right. like he just put on everything that comes mm -hmm. into his mind collage it into a piece yeah. and he did a couple mm -hmm. Which I think like reflects his background because he was like he started off as like a graphic designer. Yeah. Right? Is it possible we show that or is that too like censored? With that con photographs. Uh, oh. Has it oh. shown on screen? Okay. Maybe. 
Maybe a condom is too sensitive for our. Uh, yeah, I hope not. I hope standards. I hope our I hope our viewers are like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. It's condom, man. Like it's like. It was a great photograph, though. Yeah, it's a great uh, photograph. It's very so well like. Composed. It um, is. Yeah. It is. It is. Sweet Sorrow is also crazy. I mm -hmm. think it's like two years in the making. I'm almost sour that I didn't like be able to be a part of the production because I heard a lot of stories about it. Mm -hmm. They'd yeah. be like, the previous assistant before me, they always tell me about like how they have to like move huge generators from like the first floor to the to the to the um, ceiling to the rooftop to the rooftop, to the rooftop. Yeah, yeah. yeah because like uh, tall and low like those old school Hong mm -hmm. Kong buildings they just don't have elevators yeah, in it yeah, and how do you yeah. move uh, like. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a huge production. Yeah, because a lot of the photographs were on Hong Kong rooftops yeah, in that series. Yeah, yeah. They, he wanted like neon lights in the background, yeah. and he wanted to pose people topless. That's why we can't show the images uh, on our show from right, that series, right, but right. they're breathtaking, like a lot. Um, and they, they're like a lot of the models are just like sitting outside in yeah, the bare yeah. open Hong Kong weather. And um, it was no, I don't think there was yeah. any sponsorship for it. He just he just spent like. He spent quite a lot of money to to do this mm -hmm. project, so yeah. good props to him. Like he's, w I want to talk about this about Wayne too. Like that that makes me really like uh, one thing I admire him a lot. Besides other commercial photographers I've worked with, um, when you get a budget, usually like oh they try to like keep as much as possible for their own sake. Like hey, mm. I mean dude's gotta eat. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but then for Wayne, it's like if this project is cool. He would take the budget and he throws it all in, and then he pulled out his own wallet and he would pay more just to make that photograph uh, like mm. better yeah. or like make the production even better. So yeah, and he does really like take care of like the younger folks. Like he knows like kids gotta prove like that they're creative too. You know what I'm saying? They can't wait for like 15 years to get to a stage where like people are m starting to recognize your skills and mm. stuff. My first, my first project. I, I was doing for him uh, was in Shanghai and I remember looking at the set and um, he also gave this like how to say basically he was supposed to be an art director or something but he gave up this position for like a 20 year uh, 28 year old like girl or like this agency uh. that's really young agency and he just let them create and he would just be more of like a mentor and I was mm. like wow the set turned out really really great amazing yeah. I was just like wow Good props to you, you both. I mean, shout it's out like to the so young artists. It's so hard to find too. those kinds of artists yeah. today. Yeah, it's hard to find like older generation who are willing to like, who are willing to breed the new new generation mm -hmm. and stuff. Just like, hey, oh, it's my last ten years in the game. Let me just let me just stay here longer. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Uh, any crazy stories from when you were working with him? <coughs> um, not crazy. But there was one that like Wayne gave me a look. He gave me that really serious look. Just for a second though, because he's usually a pretty lightweight guy. <laughs> it's more like I was using this like wind machine. Um, oh, you were actually using a wind machine? Yeah, I was using a wind machine or something, and then like the <laughs> model were like facing this way. Mm -hmm. So like the wind is blowing this, yeah. which makes sense. The hair got go like naturally flow <laughs> or something. But we only have like an hour, like it's a really short amount of time or something to shoot this artist or talent. And um, everyone was in a hurry, so there's no time for like mistakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then like the talent decided to turn her head without like during the shoot, without like any like just n there's no signal about it, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have no. I was just holding the like wind it. machine and whatever, and then she just went like the opposite way. And I think they did some design with her hair, so it took a while. And then the wind machine no, just basically like the wind like just like blows her hair yeah. forward. I, I mean, I also, I also effed up on one part. Was like <laughs> instead of turning it off, I want to turn it off. I saw his neck start moving and stuff, but then like I got nervous, so I pressed the wrong button. It was like burst, so the wind just like. Woo! It just <laughs> shoot out, and her entire hair just like it was going <laughs> crazy. And then Wing just put down his camera, and then he looked at me like, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, <laughs> my bad. And in that case, that is a mistake that he uh, would not accept. That um, is a mistake that we call a mistake. That is more or it's like not working. Yeah, it's not the mistake That's that like working. out of creativity, you know. That's a mistake out of carelessness. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> it's like okay. Yeah, I should I should have asked him that. Hey, that's a mistake. Could be beautiful. <laughs> Probably slap me though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, well, we're running close to the uh, end of the show, but um, 
we're glad to have you here. Thank uh, you. You only just joined like two weeks ago. Right? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you come in from New York or d um, were you yeah. already in Hong Kong? I mean, I was already in Hong Kong. Uh, no, I was, what do you mean? When I joined Gold Threat? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I was, I was working for Wing. Oh, yeah. okay. And then came to Gold yeah. Threat, create more stuff. Mm -hmm. Here I am. All right. Well, we're glad to have you on board. Thank and, you. And uh, thank you for tuning in to Gold Thread Late Night. Uh, we're on every Thursday at 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time and 11 a.m. Hong Kong Time. Uh, stick around for our next show. You've been watching Late Night with Gold Thread. Thank you and come again.